Oh, matter of fact, before we go in and watch this video, do me a solid. Hit the subscribe button below and the notification bell. Bible. All right, your brothers got to listen good. Nehemiah, what you got? Nehemiah chapter 10 verse 31. Come on. And if the people of the land bring where or any victuals on the Sabbath day. To All right, so victuals and uh, where, this is going into merchandise. You understand? So our forefathers were saying, look, if another people come, right, because this ain't your people that own the store, is it? You understand? See, back then they had to bring the merchandise to us. Right? Now we go to them on the Sabbath day. It's all turned upside down. Right? But the mindset that we had during this time was that we're going to prevent anyone from coming in to our area and trying to entice our people to buy and to sell on God's holy day. That's the mindset that we had. Come on. Where are any vittles on the Sabbath day to sell? To do what? To sell. Come on. That we would not by and on of them on the Sabbath. Nehemiah said, look, I'm not going to let you buy anything. Even if you want to buy something, I'm not going to let you do it. Because you're harming yourself. And if I allow you to do that, then I hate you. Because God says don't do it. God says don't do it. And if I allow you to commit sin, I'm truly not showing love to you, my brother. I'm showing hatred to you. Come on. You pull up Mark chapter 2, verse 22. What's that say? Get Mark chapter 2. What's that say? That is when Jesus and his disciples were going through a field and his disciples started to pick grain. They tried to pick the grain? And then the Pharisees were telling, were saying to Jesus, how are you going to let your disciples do this on the Sabbath day? All right. And Jesus responded with, do you not know what King David did? Right. When he went into the temple and ate the food that he was ate meant show bread. for the prophets? Yes. Go to Matthew 12. All right, get Matthew 12. It say the same thing. It doesn't matter which gospel we go to to read it to you. Yeah, that's fine. That's fine. Okay, all right, we go to Matthew chapter tw uh, 12, all right? Now, there's more statutes to the Sabbath day. So really, before you can understand Christ, you have to understand the culture of Christ. If you don't understand Christ's culture, you're not going to understand anything he did, right? If you don't understand uh, that there's a law for you to have a beard on your face, then you're not going to understand the significance of them ripping that off of his face. Why, why, that's, why that detail is even mentioned in the Bible? You understand what I'm saying? It's just, it's just a, a, a detail to you, right? But that's not a, a, it's not significant because you don't know that there's a commandment, there was a commandment for Christ to have a beard on his face. You understand what I'm saying? So you have to understand Christ's culture to really understand why he said some of the things that he said in the Gospels. All right, you following me? Read what you got. The book of Matthew, chapter 12, verse 1. At that time, Jesus went on the Sabbath day through the corn and his disciples were hungry and began to pluck the ears of corn and to eat but when the Pharisees saw it they said unto him behold thy disciples do that which is not lawful to do upon the Sabbath day all right stop right there what was not lawful about what just happened they were doing work they were plucking grain to do what to eat to eat right now get hold that, get Leviticus chapter 19, and I think it's verse 10 or 11. All right? So you have to understand the law to really understand what was going on. All right? And then I want Deuteronomy chapter 23. I want, I want that one too. So you have to understand the culture to actually understand what was going on. Because the Pharisees, who was, who was, who was questioning Christ? It was the leaders of the Jewish church temple. No, you don't read about Jewish anything in the Bible. These were Israelites. These were Pharisees. You understand? Experts in the law. That's who was questioning Christ. You understand? People who understood the culture. You understand what I'm saying? These were not uh, 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 white people uh, who were keeping God's commandments, coming to Christ to ask him about his culture. Because Christ was a black man. What? You understand what I'm saying? Did you know that? You sure? I don't want you to be confused. Because I know the image that's in everybody's mind about what Christ looked like. And I hope that's not in your mind. Because this is the picture of Christ right here. So when you say Jewish people, 
came to Christ, you make me think that you believe Christ would look like a Jewish person. All right? Christ was a black man. Christ was a black man, had woolly hair. The people he was dealing with was black men that had woolly hair. All right? All right? So these were Jews that came to him, all right? Look. Right, right. Which one? Black. Black. Right. Well, we're speaking a language that everybody can understand. Right. All right. So the oppressors gave us that term. The tribe that he came from was Judah. You understand? What? He's an Israelite from the tribe of Judah. That's who Christ was. That's but right. today, if you saw Christ, you would think that he was what? A black man. <laughs> you understand? That's that's how you would identify him. You understand? You was given a police report. Something happened. Would you say, yeah, it was that Judite from the tribe of Israel that robbed that store? Nah, the police wouldn't know who the hell you was talking about. You'd be like, yeah, he was black, he was 6'6", six, six. he had a black coat on, he had, a, he had red boots on. These are things that you would say. Right. Because we've been destroyed as a people. Right. And this is how we identify. You understand? These are the things, this is, this is our vocabulary. We don't have a vernacular of, that's biblical. That's not how we speak today. You understand? So when I say Christ was a black man, you do understand that I'm saying Christ was an Israelite from the tribe of Judah. You understand that, right? Right. So there's no confusion. All right, read what you got in Le Leviticus 19. Come on. Leviticus chapter 19, verse 10. Come on. And verse 9. And when ye reap the harvest of your land. When you do what? When you do what? And when you reap the harvest of your land. So there's a commandment for you to reap the harvest of your land. You understand? Come on. Thou shalt not wholly reap the corners of thy field. So why was there even corn left for Christ to pluck? Because there was a commandment in the Old Testament to allow there to be some for that, was, for that way poor people could go by and take some when they needed it. Yes, that's what we're about to read. Come on. Neither shalt thou gather the gleanings of thy harvest. The gleanings would be what? Any of the leftover parts, anything that fell on the floor. The, the, the gleanings would be like the, you, you, you got a, uh, all, all the way on the outermost skirts of your land. You understand? You, you, you trying to be, you trying to get, reap all the profit. You understand? Of, of, of your land and of your harvest. So you, you, you going into the corners to get every little thing. You're not leaving anything in, inside of, of your vineyard. You understand? That would be the gleaning. So someone would come and glean from your land. That means that they would come and take that which was left on the outskirts or that which was left because you didn't take everything up. You understand? You left some there for the poor. You left some there for those that were hungry. You understand? That's how we got down back then. We weren't stingy. You understand? We was considerate of our neighbors. That's the whole spirit of this law. You understand? And Christ was keeping this. Come on. Verse 10. Read. And thou shalt not glean thy vineyard, neither shalt thou gather every grape of thy vineyard. So of every grape, you're not going to gather them all, you're going to leave some. For who? The widows, the oppressed, the fatherless, you understand? The, the weak in our community. We're going to leave some, the poor, for all of these types of people. All right, come on. Thou shalt leave them for the poor and stranger. So we had corn left. You understand? Because it was a law to have those types of things in our in our vineyard. Now get Deuteronomy chapter 22. Yep. Stay right there. Yeah, I, read that again. Watch this, brother. It's a, it's a point in there that I need you to understand. Watch this. Verse 10. Excuse me. Yeah, verse 10. And thou shalt not glean thy vineyard. All right. Neither shalt thou gather every grape. Neither shall you shall not glean your vineyard, neither shall you gather every grape. Right? Watch this. Of thy vineyard, uh -huh. thou shalt leave them for the poor and stranger. Who's the stranger? Stranger would be somebody who's not born and raised that land. That's right. So who was Christ and his disciples when they were gleaning from that land? They were the strangers. So Christ, as the officer was just saying, was indeed keeping that law. That's what Christ came to do. Bring us back to the understanding of what we lost in slavery. Was Christ in captivity when he was here? Yes, to the Romans. He was a captive. He was a slave. So that's the poor point there. Because they had, it had been left over from the harvest. Correct. All right, read what you got. Deuteronomy chapter 23, verse 24. Come on. When thou comest unto thy neighbor's vineyard. When you come where? 
unto thy neighbor's vineyard. All right, so this is a precept to Leviticus 19. Come on. Then thou mayest eat grapes. Then thou mayest do what? Then thou mayest eat grapes. That's a law. You understand? Does it say what day you do that? Does it say what day you do that? Does it say don't do it on the Sabbath day? So what are they talking about? Read it again from the top. When thou comest unto thy neighbor's vineyard, then thou mayest eat grapes. If I say you may do something, does that say that it's okay or that means that you can't do it? If you were told beforehand not to do it on a Sunday, then I'd assume it means still not to do it on Sunday specifically. No, this said, when did it say don't do that on a Sunday? The Sabbath day. When did it say don't eat on the Sabbath day? As you already read from Nehemiah, not to do work on the Sabbath. Right. Don't do not do work. You don't got to go buy. Did, he buy the corn? did Christ buy the corn? Did Christ buy the corn? Did he cook the corn? What law did he break? Did he harvest the corn? Did he harvest the corn? He did not even harvest the corn. When you harvest something, that means that you're going to go out there with the with the sickle. Ain't that what the tool called? I got it. I'm going to read it. I'm gonna read it. All right, all right, all right. And we're we going we gonna to read it again. We're going to read it again. Read it from the top. Yes, sir. When thou comest unto thy neighbor's vineyard, Come on. then thou mayest eat grapes thy fill at thine own pleasure. So this was a, a law. It said you're allowed to do this thing, right? You can do this, all right? I want. I say it's a statue, all right? It's a statue. This is something that's permissible. You're given the understanding of what's allowed. Right. Come on. But thou shalt not put any in thy vessel. Hold on. Here comes the law, all right? Thou shalt not. You heard that, right? Thou shalt not do what? Put any in thy vessel when thou comest into the standing corn of thy neighbor. Right. Come on. Then thou mayest pluck the ears with thine head. So you are allowed to take what you can take with your hands. This is a law with your hands, all right? To do what? Eat. To eat, you understand? Not to go and take it to the store and set up shop to sell it. That's unlawful. Was Christ trying to do that? What, did they, what were they trying to do? They just trying to eat it, you understand? So they came to Christ trying to trip them up on the laws, all right? Just like niggas do today. You understand? Not saying you a nigga, but you, you understand what I'm saying? Just, you, you deal with this. You understand? You deal with this, I'm sure, on day to day, uh, in church, or in school, or growing up as a child. You understand what I'm saying? Come on. But thou shalt not move a sickle. Thou shalt not do what? Thou shalt not move a sickle. You know what a sickle is? Yes, sir. That's a tool, you understand, that you use to, to harvest the corn. You understand? Thou shalt not do that. Did we read about Christ having a sickle? No, we didn't read about that, right? Come on. But thou shalt not move a sickle unto thy neighbor's standing corn. That's the law. Did Christ break that law? No. We read that Christ was without what? He was without sin. Right? Yes, sir. He was without sin, so he didn't break any laws. Right. What Christ did was lawful. All right? Now, the next question, uh, uh, Exodus or Leviticus, I want about cooking on the Sabbath day. Yes, sir, I got you. Either one. All right? So the next question is, did he cook the corn? No, he didn't cook it. Are you allowed to cook on the Sabbath day? You're supposed to have cooked the day prior. Supposed to have cooked already. All right? So these are laws that Christ did not break. He didn't break any of those laws. He didn't, he didn't harvest the corn. He didn't cook the corn. He was hungry. The law said he could eat the corn. You understand what I'm saying? So all of this was permissible, all right? So going to the store to buy juice, right? Or to buy anything for that matter, on the Sabbath day is different. It's different from Christ, you understand? Getting corn from his neighbor to eat because he's hungry. You understand what I'm saying? totally different the whole reason that there was corn left was so that christ wouldn't have to transgress the laws to go anywhere to buy anything right. so those laws are in place to keep you from sinning you understand what i'm saying so totally different from going to the store to buy something on the sabbath that's not permissible under christ because christ was hungry and they ate corn from their neighbors totally different right come on the book of exodus chapter 16 verse 23 and he said unto them, 
This is that which the Lord had said. Tomorrow is the rest of the Holy Sabbath. So this was a commandment that was being retaught to the Israelites. You understand? Tomorrow is the Sabbath day, right? So this must have been what day? It must have been Friday. Come on. Unto the Lord. Bake that which ye will bake today. So bake that which you're going to bake today. All right? Do all your cooking today. Come on. And seethe that ye will see. You know what seethe, seething means? It's a biblical term. You know what that is? Sir, uh, it's getting it's getting out like grinding corn and stuff. It, no, it's, it's it's when you uh yeah when you boil when you put water in a pot put it on top of the fire the water start bubbling because you can cook in that you know you know what I'm talking about you can change the chemical state of something by boiling it boiled chicken boiled eggs if the boiled egg tastes like a regular egg nah you changing that whole whole properties of that you understand so the Bible says do all your cooking boil it boiling baking, frying, all that stuff, do it beforehand, all right? Do it on any of those six days that you had before, the Sabbath day. Come on. And see that ye will see, and that which remaineth over, lay up for you to be kept unto the morning. So on the Sabbath day, right, you need to lay up, right? Or, I'm sorry, on Friday, right, you need to lay up what you will have for tomorrow so you don't have to go to the store to buy it you don't have to cook it you don't have to boil it all that has already been done for you you understand all that's already been done that's a law of god all right that's how you keep the sabbath day holy that's how you become a child of god that's how you walk you understand how christ walked that's how you follow the example that was set all right so i hope you learned some things today christian yeah brother all right now, you need to keep God's commandments because you're an Israelite, all right? And the church you're going to is not teaching you that. Hold on, I want to bring something out for you. Get Ezekiel, I think it's chapter 22 and 11 about uh, uh, the priests and profane the law. All the priests have profaned the law. 22, Ezekiel 22. Try that, all right? Because this is what's happening and you're getting ready to go to church, right? You need to have a controversy with the leaders of your church. I got you. you know what that means? It means you need to have a problem with them. They need y'all need to sit down and talk now, because you've been at this church for how long? Uh, a couple months. You've been at this church for a couple months. They ever told you anything I just told you today about getting tattoos? You shouldn't do that. They did. All right. Did they tell you that you you can't go buy and food? You can't buy food and drink even if you're hungry on the Sabbath day. I consider the Sabbath to be Sunday. All right, but did they tell you that God says the Sabbath is Saturday? They tell you that God says the seventh day of the week. It does, however, we follow a different calendar than what was probably used a long time ago. You say we follow a different calendar, all right? Months and shit. Right. What day of the week? What day of the week is the first day? With the calendar we use in America, Sunday. All right. It's Sunday. And what's the seventh day of the week? Saturday. All right. According to the Bible. When did God rest? On the seventh day. So why don't you rest on the seventh day? Because that's for the calendar we use in America. Not every country uses the same schedule of weeks. However, the standardized one for America oh, is using Saturday. All right. So, right, what you're basically what you're telling me right now. Look at this sign. All right. So basically, what you're telling me right now is that the man that said that you were an American black is greater than the man that said that you were Judah. No. That's what you're telling me right now. That's what you're telling me. Well, because I said other countries use a different week schedule that ends on Sunday. You're going off the American schedule that ends on Saturday. The schedule that I'm going off of, right, is to the best of our knowledge, right, the day every single week is ne never going to be eight days to a week, nine days to a week, ten days to a week. We came out of a, a time period where there was 10 days to a week and we had to be retaught. So the time that we live in right now, we all understand when the first day of the week is. You understand? The names don't matter. If we understood that the first day of the week was Tuesday, then we would be celebrating the Sabbath on whatever day the seventh day of the week was. You understand what I'm saying? So the time that we live in and every, is no excuse. It's, there's no excuse for us 
to say I'm not going to celebrate the Sabbath on the seventh day of the week, whatever day that is. There's no excuse for that. You understand? Watch this. When do you celebrate the new year? January 1st. Who did you learn that from? So again, you're telling me that the man that calls you an American black is greater than the man that calls you a Judah. That's what you're telling me. Because January comes from the God of Janus. And that comes from the Romans and the Greeks. All right, it's a God that has two heads. One facing this way and one facing that way. It's supposed to represent everlasting. You understand? That's where January comes from. January 1st is the dead of winter. It's cold outside. All right? It's cold outside on January 1st. Nothing is growing. Nothing is becoming new. So why is it the new year for you? It's the new year for you because the white man said it's the new year. The people that call you American black said it's the new year. The people that told you to celebrate the Sabbath day on Sunday said it's the new year. You understand? Exodus chapter 12. They're already there. All right, read what you got. Exodus chapter 12 and verse 1. Remember, there's no excuse. We know today, the first day of the week, Sunday. The seventh day of the week, Saturday. All right? Now we're dealing with the year. Because you're telling me you celebrate the new year when? In the dead of winter. That's when your year becomes new. Why? Because the white man says that this is the calendar we should use. But you know, January 1st, it's snow outside on the ground. It's cold. You understand? Everything is dead. Nothing is growing. This tree ain't even came back to life yet. Right. Read. Verse 1. And the Lord spake unto Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, saying, This month shall be unto you the beginning of months. Christ said, look, Moses said this, right? He said, this month is going to be the beginning of your months. What's that make that year? That would be the new year. That would be the new year. Let's find out what time it is. Come on. It shall be the first month of the year to you. No, to all of the heathens round about. It shall be the first month of the year to you. We don't care about what everybody else is doing. We don't care about what the calendar is here. We don't care about what, who, who says the days of the week is what they are. I know Monday is Monday, Tuesday is Tuesday, Wednesday is Wednesday, because that's what our people identify with. God says the first day of the week, the second day of the week, the third day of the week. We don't read about Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, none of that. We don't read about that stuff. Sunday is named after the sun god. Monday is named after Mercury. No, Mars. Mar M moon god. Tuesday is named after Mars. Uh, Wednesday, Mercury. Thursday, I think, is uh, Jupiter. All right? Friday, Venus. Saturday, Saturn. You understand? Saturnalia. All this stuff. That's all comes from what? Greeks and Romans and, and uh, 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 ast astrology and being uh, amazed with the stars and everything that we see. All the things that was created for us, these things are named after. But God doesn't call these things any of that. First day of the week, second day of the week, third day of the week. You understand? That's what God calls them. But why do we say Saturday, Monday, Tuesday? Because that's what you identify with. You can understand that. You know that Sunday is the first day of the week. So I'm going to call it Sunday. You know Saturday is, is the seventh day of the week. So I'm going to call it Saturday. But the Bible calls it what? What's the Bible call Saturday? Seventh day of the week. The seventh day of the week or the Sabbath. You understand? So there's no excuse. There's no excuse. Read, keep reading in, in Exodus in, in uh, chapter 12. Chapter 12 where you were. Sir. Read. This month shall be unto you the beginning of months. So this month is the beginning of months, meaning that it's the new year, right? Come on. It shall be the first month of the year to you. Speak ye unto all the congregations of Israel. So the Lord said, speak these things, give this time frame to who? The nation of Israel. So it don't matter what everybody else is doing. All right, come on. Say, in the tenth day of this month, they shall take to them every man a lamb, according to the house of their fathers. So what, why were they taking a lamb? What was getting ready to happen? Sorry, say that one more time. Why were they taking a lamb? Oh, because the Passover. The Passover. That's right. Right? Now get Deuteronomy chapter 16. All right, read what you got. Deuteronomy chapter 16, verse 1. Come on. Observe the month of Abib. 
the Bible says, observe the month of Abib, right? Come on. And keep, now mind you, this is another uh, uh, term or description of a month, just like this month uh, is what month? March. You understand? But is that, uh, is March a Hebrew word? No. You understand? A bib during this time, was that a, a, a term that God gave us for describe, to describe the first month of the year? No. But th these were the terms that we identify with during that time. What, one thing that doesn't change is the seasons. It don't change. You know when it's winter, you know when it's summer. Summer is never winter. Winter is never summer. They never mix. You understand what I'm saying? We know these things, so there's no excuse. Read. Observe the month of Abib. The Bible says, observe the month of Abib. Come on. And keep the Passover. Keep what? And keep the Passover. The Lord says, keep the Passover during the time of Abib. All right? We read in Exodus 12 that during the Passover is what month of the year? Oh, I'm sorry. It's the first month of the year, right? Are we celebrating the Passover at, at the 12th month of the year or the 8th month of the year? What did, when did the Bible say we're celebrating the Passover? First month. The first month of the year. The first month of the year is the month of a bib. You understand? Do you know what a bib is? No, I don't. Take out your phone and Google a bib. Just take it out and Google a bib. So you can find out what a bib is. A B I B. A B I B. All right? What are we reading? The Bible. That's right. We're reading the Bible. I can read about the month of Abib in the Bible. All right? I can read about that. What does Abib say? The uh, first month of the ancient Hebrew calendar. It's the first month. The first month of the year. What time of the year is it? It should tell you more. It should tell uh, you more. The month of barley ripening and the first month of spring. Oh, uh, springtime. Wow. Doesn't that make sense? So according to the Bible, when is the new year? Probably around March. Exactly. So when should we be celebrating the new year? Around now. Around, around March, around now. You understand? It's coming up. It's about two weeks from now. You understand? Passover is coming up. It's about three weeks from now. Four weeks from now. You understand? So there's no excuse. There's no excuse that I'm not going to keep the Sabbath day because we call the first day of the week Sunday now. There's no excuse for that. There's no excuse for you celebrating the new year during January when the Bible says that the new year is during the springtime when things become new. That's called an excuse. All right? Drop that. Get Sirach chapter 32. All right, read what you got. You want to know a different day? 24. Hey, brother, I got Sirach chapter Hold 32. On, real quick. Verse 24. He that believeth in the Lord. He that believeth in the Lord. Take of heed to the commandment. All right. Uh, read that again. I'm sorry. This is scripture. He that believeth in the Lord, take of heed to the commandment. All right. So the Bible said, he that believes in the Lord. You believe in the Lord? Yes, sir. Right. Now you know the new year is when? Uh, March. Right. You know the new year is in March. You know that the Sabbath day is when? It's Saturday. It's Saturday. Regardless of what calendar we're using, right? It's going to be what day of the week? According to your understanding, the seventh day of the week is when? Saturday. It's no question about that. So when should you be celebrating the Sabbath? Today. We used to scream black power while Heron was pushed. But at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission Minor murmuring, omitting, and missing the mark Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark We on Paul's mission We out on the road Purple and gold From Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana Sierra Leone 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling These are how men repented at heart the scriptures is proof, I-U-I-C, we deliver the truth.